Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We have one of the all-time greats on the show. Oh, yeah. Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. How's your, how's your fuck game, Chuck? Is it good? What's up? Yeah, your fuck game. Oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. I don't know why you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't swing that way. We <laughs> No, but it's for the audience. Look, I'm married, you're married. You, you get it, but it's for the audience. They want to know that Chuck's fuck game is still great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, still the top of its, it's game. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's still good. Yeah. Like it's still, still all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big fan I'm of that. Still, again, uh, not sure why you're asking. But. <laughs> well, here's the thing: when when you're with a couple of gentlemen, such as ourselves, right, and we're drinking frescas, um, oh, some... you got, he got stuck. I try to talk about something manly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think that's just how he uh, how he he chose to. So you get a little awkward there, when you're around guys. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: we're all drinking seltzers because it's you well, know watching calories or whatever, like. <laughs> It's, I'm it's one of those things that where are seltzers? Oh, yeah. That's actually pretty good Because yeah, here's the deal bad. You look like you could still go out And tear somebody's face off in the ring today How, how are you staying in shape? Just training I still do the same stuff I mean I, mm. I like Hitting a bag is probably my Favorite way to work out mm. You know that or wrestling So you know it's It just makes it I still lift a little bit, but mo- mostly I, just, I hit the bag here and there Yeah Because look We see a lot of these fights In particular the, Do the, the older fighters man are coming back. So Mike Tyson is fighting again. All these guys are fighting again. So when I watched the Tyson fight, I looked at Roy Jones and I was like, ah, he looks a little out of shape. Whereas Mike Tyson dropped 60 pounds to got in shape and it was like, oh, well, he could, he looks like he could kill somebody still. Oh, he, man, he hit in the bag and hit in the midst of, man, he looked vicious. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and I, I'm honest, the, my biggest disappointment from that whole fight was really just, they didn't really have a walkout. Like, he didn't yeah. do it. Like, I... I miss the old like Tyson walkouts were awesome. It's the even best. weird as like, I, 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 that, that man. I remember back. That was back yeah, yeah. when boxing was like the if you didn't know if you didn't know who the heavyweight champion was, you weren't a guy. Right. Yeah. 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 Like now, now, like who's the who's the heavyweight champion? I'm even like, oh, I yeah. Know, well, man. yeah. I mean, it's I, like it, a little, it might be Tyson. It might be Wilder. It might be fair. One yeah. of those for real, where you're just you don't really know. And like as a kid, it's interesting you bring out the the opening music because. As a kid, I remember it to this day where Mike was coming out to Chains. Remember yeah. it was just like Chains slamming on a ground? Yeah. yeah. He didn't even have a fight song, some of the fights, and you were like, what the fuck am I getting yeah, into? Yeah, as, as good a job as Dana's done about keeping UFC on it, it's weird seeing the guys walk out with no fans and stuff. I mean, it's, just, it's still bizarre to me to see that. Yeah. Uh, well, although, for the, for yeah, the most well, part, the other sports I feel like are suffering from it. UFC is not because it's still all contained in the ring and it added an extra element where you can hear the corner, corner guys now. Yeah, yeah, that's actually interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that reminds me of uh, a fight in Japan. Like, because mm-hmm. I, I tell, tell that story a lot of times. Like, Japan, like, this, the fans, while you're fighting, don't make a lot of noise. Mm-hmm. Like, if you pass guard, they actually, they're really educated fans. Mm-hmm. Like, if you pass the guard, they'll, they'll actually go, ooh. Wow, and then stop. But you can talk to your corner while you're fighting in Japan. Wow, it's like with eighteen in front of eighteen. I find in front of eighteen thousand people there, and you can talk to your corner. Who while did you you're fight? Fighting. What was it for Strike Force or K One or something like that? No, it was uh, Pride. 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 Yeah. I, fought, yeah. I, fought, I fought over there what, one, two, three, three times. Yeah. Uh, look, enough to get it three times in the back of your head. Was that uh, what it's for? No, that's my original karate style, Koei mm. Khan. Oh, okay, mm. cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's what we put on our geese when you get your black belt. Because mm. you know, you know, I have Asian writing tattooed on myself as well. Um, I, I, you're telling me a little bit too much about you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see it? No, 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 we're going to, no, we're going to really show not. Chuck live on air. You ready? If you, if you, it just says Asian writing <laughs> in English though. <laughs> in English, right. it says Asian writing. Oh, that's awesome. You're welcome. <laughs> that, 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 that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck's filing a fucking sexual harassment lawsuit right now. <laughs> Can somebody get my agent on the phone? <laughs> well, his, like, you actually studied what you do or whatever. Mine was more or less to make fun of, like, hipsters who were, like, getting all this, you know, Asian writing on them. They weren't well, doing I anything do, I, with... I don't... I think it's the funniest thing. Like, people are like, I'll take number eight. Yes. Like, well, what? The fuck yeah. does that even mean? Like, like, why would you put a tattoo on you that doesn't mean something mm-hmm. to you? Like, it's yeah. on there permanently. You got that? Permanently, yeah. Permanently on you. So yeah. Why, why... If it doesn't mean... Like, it's got to be... Like, for me, it meant, it meant something to me. It was... I, it's a long story, but I was just like... It was kind of one of the things they, they were stripping me of my black belt and me basically telling, fuck you, I earned it. Mm-hmm. You can't take it from me. 
So that was, mm-hmm. was kind of like, so like an let's, let's get into it then. So you started out, a lot of guys from early UFC came out of wrestling. But yeah. you came out of some form of well, like stand-up not martial really, arts. Right? Right. Look, I, I started doing karate when mm-hmm. I was 12. I started doing wrestling when I was 14. Mm-hmm. I wrestled in high school and college. <clears throat> I was a Division One wrestler. Um, and, and then I went on to doing... When I was done wrestling, I started competing in kickboxing. Mm. You know, and I was a, a mediocre wrestler. I got hurt, hurt my senior year. I barely made it back for, for, for finals. I did, I did okay. I didn't, I didn't, didn't do great. I mean, let's put it this way. Like, I've, uh, the year, uh, like, Kevin Randleman, we wrestled the same weight in college. Mm. He, was a, he was at Ohio State when, when he was a national champ. Yeah. Yes. The same year I was 9 and 12. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was, nine and, I was 9 and 12. You know, I was, yeah. it wasn't that bad. I mean, for Division One, it's not easy. Right, you know? yeah. yeah. But I, and I was a, I'm a hard... I, I'm, I was really a hard guy to score on. It wasn't easy to score on. I just wasn't really good at scoring points either. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so that, 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 didn't, that didn't help. But so then I went to kickboxing from there to keep competing. And then somewhere along the line, and someone asked, hey, you want to do a mixed fight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard you wrestled. I'm, sure. So I, so I actually back then, and back back in that day, it was, you know, most guys came from one thing, from wrestling or right. striking or jujitsu, right? And they they came in and they had to learn the other two two disciplines. Right. Yeah, but you'd already had. I two had kind two. Of experience, I came so, yeah. in with I was, I was a hmm. striker. I mean, I had sixteen knockouts in, kick, in kickboxing. Right. I was 20 and two. Mm-hmm. I had 16 KOs in, in kickboxing. And then I came in with, with striking and wrestling. Right. And then you know, it was funny. I, like, I, I, there was a little time in the beginning where I was always oh, a wrestler killer, you know, go out mm-hmm. and, because you killing wrestling. But I, that was because I was a wrestler. I just used it different. I right, used, right, yeah. I was doing the sprawl and brawl. Like, I, I sprawl, the sprawl and, and knock out. And, and part of that reason for that was I, I thought that was the best place for me to finish a fight. Like I could finish fights on my feet. I can knock you out. Like I, I, I like knocking you out. Like there's less, you're using less energy. You're not yeah. rolling around on the ground for three and a half minutes and then finally. Yeah, it, yeah. When it's more exciting. It's also well, and more exciting. And, sure. and here's the thing. Well, the thing I did, I think one of the things I did really well back then was I had to learn jujitsu, right? Mm. Right when I learned it, I learned how to, I, I spent most of my time working on getting out of bad positions mm. and standing back up. Right. Like, People would show me stuff on how to sweep, and I go, "Wait, halfway through that sweep, I can just pull my leg out and I'm up, yeah. I'm out." But they don't teach that. So you were watching, you were watching tape on yourself. It, yeah, and I wasn't tape, tape on myself, and I was watching uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Mark Lehman, gave me mm-hmm. this tape called a Half Guard Remix, mm-hmm. and it was just guys doing half guard stuff and just sweeping guys and doing stuff, and and I'm like looking at it, and I'm going, "Wait!" Like I kept looking at it, going, "If I just pull my leg out right there, I'm standing up and I'm I'm free, and I can punch him again." And and I think even to this day, still with a lot of fighters, it's hard to get guys get stuck in, in tunnel vision when they start sure, fighting. Yeah. So they start fighting, mm-hmm. and like I got one of my buddies at K one. He's a K one fought in the K one. Great great fighter, great kickboxer. Started doing MMA. Mm-hmm. Started fighting a uh, strike force, mm-hmm. and he would get, he would get a guy to shoot in. He'd sprawl, and then he would body lock the guy. And I'm like. What the fuck are you doing? You're using yeah. a lot of energy. Let go. Yeah. You're using you, a lot of energy. What are you going to do with the body lock? You yeah. don't know what to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> Push yeah. off. Get away from him. Hit that guy. Yeah. Stop. Stop trying to wrestle. You, and I even saw one time he dropped to the single. But what are you doing? Yeah. You don't know how to finish the single. Well, you got a lot of your yeah. knockouts during that separation. Like the, the yeah. bang up, then you push out and knock the guy out. And that was a lot of the stuff I did was like, uh, was mixing the two together. Like right. getting guys I could, and, I, and like I fought um, Overeem mm-hmm. yep. in, in Pride. Mm-hmm. I went out and fought Overeem. You know why? I, I, if I fought him in a kickbox, straight kickboxing match back then, mm-hmm. he would have beat me, mm-hmm. most yeah. likely. He was a better straight kickboxer than I was. Right. But when I took him down, I went out there and I took him down right away. Made him worry about me taking him down. Mm-hmm. Now, I, fro- I, I had him guessing whether or not I'm going to pu- take him down or go. And I caught him with a straight right. Yeah. And I caught him mm-hmm. with the overhand and then finished him with That high leg kind of gets neutralized if he's worried about you coming in his leg. Yeah, and time, if he, yeah. He, well, as soon as I took him down, it, oh, he, and yeah. now he doesn't, now he's a little, and then he freezes you up a little mm-hmm. bit. And, it was. It allowed me. Even that to, split second is enough. Yeah, right? that, that, yeah, that split second to freeze you up a little bit, so now I can get get off on you. Um, and and so you know, it's it's, it's being able to, to go between the, the styles was one of the things that, that made me really good in the beginning because mm-hmm. I was able to to be able to. Well, also, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not just the the style though. Obviously, you were doing a lot of homework. Like yeah. a lot, working out is one thing, but working out like strategizing well, and, and using and, tape and is and a being, whole other thing. Being creative. I mean, like mm-hmm. for me, like because like. 
Scott Adams is a, one of my partners, and he was a really good leg lock guy. Mm. And he he rolled in knee bars really well. Mm. And I, I figured out with that same thing, I'm in the middle of doing that, I saw that, and I'm trying to go to that knee bar, but I don't really like doing knee bars too mm. much because then you're stuck in leg lock war right. with people. And I get halfway there, and I'm like, oh, wait. I can hit pie out. I just have to stand, pull my leg out. Yep. Now I'm standing with his leg up here. I can either take him down or just push him off and kick him. Mm-hmm. You know, and that and that was like one of the things that for me I was able. There wasn't many guys who could stay on top of me at all, and right. I and I just go back and forth. I mean, I was friends with uh, Rico Rodriguez mm-hmm. back then. He was, I think, he was Abu Dhabi champ yeah, uh, one, yeah. one of those years, yeah. and in a heavyweight, and he couldn't stay on top of me. You know, yeah. We trained together. He couldn't stay on top of me. We do five minutes just just wrestling, no striking. But he couldn't stay on top of me. I don't think I've ever heard you talk this in depth about your strategy behind your fighting. To be honest, yeah, well, I'm sure I, you have in some places. I, I've never heard this before. This is fascinating to me. Yeah. Well, for me, the biggest thing what I, I did is I, I I came into the UFC in the, at a time I, right. I went straight into UFC pretty much. Mm-hmm. I fought one mm-hmm. mixed fight and then fought in the UFC. So I, I was at the top. And part of my reason for the the way I learned jujitsu was. I, I didn't have time to get good enough to beat anybody at that level by submission. Right. Like I'm not going to submit most guys at that level unless I rock them first. Right. right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that's, 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 they're not all there. Yeah. yeah. You know? um, so I'm not going to submit them, but I, 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 I learned, but I also knew like wrestling, people mm. always ask me how to stop a takedown to stop a takedown. It's, it's not simple. But it's not a simple answer. Right. You have to understand set takedowns. I need to under if you're a good wrestler, I need to understand where you're going, what you want to do, because you're gonna go, you're gonna go back and forth, you're gonna switch back and forth, you're gonna switch to single, switch to double. You're, you're gonna counter what I counter, right? Yeah. So I need to know what you want, and, right. I, and if you're setting me up, I need to know what what you what you're doing to set me up, mm-hmm. how you set me up. So I feel the same way with submissions. I have to understand the submission, know what you want to do, mm. know how to get, how you're trying to get there, where what you need me to do to make the submission work. So if I understand all that, even if I'm not good enough to really get it on somebody that at the top level, I still know how to, what you're trying to do. Right. right. Yeah. So now I can defend it. Yeah, and and but you if know, if I don't understand it at all, like I like when I got um, Jeremy Horn got me with that arm triangle. Mm-hmm. Now I still argue. Big John, because I asked Big John, we joke about it sometimes. I'm a Big John. So you said I went out before the bell, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck didn't you stop it before the bell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I was out before the bell, why didn't yeah. you stop it before the bell? Because the bell rang. Yeah. <laughs> and then you stopped it. <laughs> so how do you call me out before the bell? Yeah. So anyway, that's my What was his explanation? He, we, we, I just kind of laughed. He said, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let's go. Well, he never really gave me an answer. So, um, I, cause, cause I, cause I think I, I saw stars after the, the thing, but I've, I've done that before wrestling. Right, I, yeah. I went the wrong way, getting out of a, a headlock, stood up and looked at a guy. If he knew I was looking at him and seeing, just seeing stars, he would have been, but I, yeah. and I saw stars after that fight, but I don't know. But anyway, I got good rematch. So it's fine. Mm. <laughs> but, get- but, but the arm, what I was getting at the arm triangle, like I just didn't know what he had. I didn't know he had anything. I thought mm. he was just holding on to me. Like a lot of guys hold on. I didn't right. know he had something. <clears throat> and I just sat, I had 10 seconds left. I, I knew the time. So I'm like, you know, I'll just, I'm not going to, we had overtime, but probably possibly an overtime. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I'll just sit here. I'll wait. Yeah. And, you know, got tighter and tighter. And so you're saying the, the uh, reason you learned jiu-jitsu is just so you could uh, did not, necessi- not necessarily learn the moves, but identify them being used well, against I, you. I want to learn them. I learned them really well. I right. just wasn't slick enough at them to set right, up a yeah. guy at the top level. Okay. Yeah. Like at a USC level. So I wasn't going to waste a lot of time trying to get you to, to submit you down there because right. it's not good. So, But I did learn how to get off the bottom and that's all I worked on I worked on bad positions I got a guy starting to mount starting on side control so I could get up get up get yeah. up and that paid off for me well you know and and it's funny like I started I like, got uh, you know I'd start doing stuff like I still knew the stuff I went for I would go for like I was out I was rolling with um Alistair before in in Holland before I before I fought him a long time a long time before I fought him and uh, a couple, couple of years, I was rolling with him one time. It was, it was pretty funny. He goes, I was going, so I went for, I, I was went for, I swept him and went for an, for an arm bar. I missed the arm bar. Mm-hmm. And, I, and he said, man, I, I thought you were a kickboxer. And, I, and I sw- then I wrote, doing it going again, I swept him again and went for a triangle. And I missed it. He goes, man, you don't have submission on the video game. <laughs> <laughs> I just started laughing. I'm like, you know, like I came here with, 
you know, I did come here with John Lewis, right? Mm-hmm. The, yeah. The jiu-jitsu coach. That's who I yeah. had come to Holland with. I, I came with him. That's I'm here with him. You know, I put two and two together. Yeah, I, I, I know jiu-jitsu. And I've been doing, I tell you, what, I, people people still to this day, like, I are so shocked that I know jiu-jitsu. I'm like. I, I'm, so I, when you said I, it, by I, the way, I, I'm shocked. I, I started in 97. Really? In 1997. I, here, here's why I'm shocked. I've been shocked. doing it for that long. I've had a purple belt for about the last 15 years. <laughs> I, I, have <laughs> an, I have an answer for this. I, I have an answer of why I'm shocked and everybody else is shocked, okay? When you started, you seem like, I so saw I was a bouncer in college, right? Yeah. When you came into the ring, you came in like a bouncer out of a bar I did not know you had any training whatsoever. I just thought you were the biggest badass in the world. And no one knew what knocking no one people knew what the MMA fuck out. Was then. We didn't. Well, no, yeah. None of us knew what it well, was. You know, yeah. you know what? That really helped me out because I never had anybody like people. People come up and try to chest you at a bar. I said, nah, you know, the, really, the thing is, I, I, I know guys, boxers have that problem. Mm. Football players, like wrestlers, guys that are wrestlers, like uh, Matt Hughes, a buddy of mine, he had guys that yeah. do that to him. Guys are jujitsu guys. But I said, the thing is, that me, I, I, they look. They look at me as like that's a street fighter. He's a yeah, brawler. Yes, he's a yes, brawler. Yes, he's a brawler with heavy hands. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you've and got I some fucking. And I look at me and I, and I, he's a brawler with heavy hands and. And to really, really, those assholes that would do that. Yeah, most of them are fans of mine anyway. Yes, and, and <laughs> <That's true>. so, <laughs> so that's funny. <laughs> they like me. So, uh, so by, by the way, and this is how I came to know about you personally was I was a bouncer at Ohio State. A um, lot of fights in the bar, whatever. There was one night where I didn't stop the fight. It was Ken, Kevin Randleman. Um, he came in. Like five dudes tried to fight him? Seven. Seven? Okay. Seven dudes tried to fight him. He was hitting on somebody's girlfriend or whatever it was, blah, blah, blah. He tore them apart in a way that I've never seen in person. Uh, he also did a move where he grabbed this guy's love handle and pinched as hard as he could. I mean, to, to the point, yeah. this guy was... It the was grip, it was the black. grip on some of these some wrestlers. I mean, like yes, Matt Hughes grab your grab the used to go around and grab you. I'm like, ow! He's Stop got big that. hands for a, a dude. Yeah, so like he's, what is he five nine or something like that? He's got some yeah. fucking gorilla mitts on him. Yeah, what's up with that guy? So with with Randleman, like you know, the manager came up to me and was like, "Hey, man, you're gonna do anything?" And I go, "No." Do you see what's going on? I, absolutely not. I'm not doing anything. Like it's Kevin Randleman's tearing people's faces off. And at that point, I think he had just beat Gracie. Yeah. Um, to win the, the title and it was like who is this huge black guy with blonde hair and you know it was starting to get really big and I was like oh shit so that's when I started getting into it and then I saw you and for all of us who were working at bars like all over Columbus, Ohio at that point yeah. we loved you because you seemed like one of us where it was just like well, the funny oh, thing shit. with that is is I was a bartender for almost nine years there it is yeah, yeah. Eight, eight nine years I, used to work, I worked on bars forever but you never got into any fights there right? <laughs> not, not, you know, the funny thing is not a lot. The funny thing, not a lot, because when I did, it was you know, I. It wasn't. It, yeah, yeah. We yeah. took guys out. And they, didn't last. But long, like, yeah. didn't last long. But like, the funny thing is, like, I was able. The nice thing because I was bar. I bar. I bar. I was a door guy for about a year, and I mm. became a bartender at bar back and a bartender mm. because they got paid better. Of yeah. course. Yeah. And so, I, but I, I'd be behind the bar and I just throw ice at guys. The guys would be like starting a fight. And I just throw ice at them. Hey, hey. Yeah. You that way. You're you, like that way. You're like the old Italian bartender. <laughs> it's like, hey, break it up out there. Yeah, I'm like, hey, no, 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 it's not happening. Go. How long have you had the the mohawk and the goatee? Ninety two. Okay, so Good there you go. God. If I saw you, because you yeah. look very similar, right? The first time you got out of the car yesterday, I go, oh, holy shit, it's still Chuck Odell. You've not aged. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. You've not aged. Nothing. You're have been Chuck Liddell since the '90s to now, and it's the same fucking dude, right? Well, that, the only, if I saw you in a bar in '92. I would not fuck with Chuck Odell. Still, like yeah. even just based yeah, on your I, looks, I got I got well, well, well known for that because it was easy to recognize. Like mm. back then, even like people that were fans, fans would be like, "But the tattoo on the side, mm. put it away." Because they, they, I'd see him looking at me, they go, "I see him go." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to I, verify. Yeah, yeah. Just that's verify, like a barcode. Oh, that's him. Oh, that's him. Hey, yeah, him. yeah. So you got now that. With the, I get that sometimes now with the mask now because I got the mask on. they would be like, "See, just look around the corner." Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's still Chuck Odell. Yeah, it's over. It's over. You're the one guy with a mask on, and it's like, eh, it's still Chuck Odell. Yeah. Well, in 05, uh, so you win uh, the heavy, uh, the light heavy title, right? Yeah. What the hell was that like? Because Randy at the time, yeah, I, I feel like he was a legend already by then, right? Yeah. He was a legend already. So well, you, he already you take beat, him down. He beat me. Yeah. And um, like what, two, three years earlier, or something uh, like that? No, Rob. Uh, about a year, I think it was a year earlier, 2003, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, so two, years about, earlier, yeah, two, two years earlier, two years, yeah. Um, uh, and then, yeah, that, and then 
yeah, and then I, I, I got, got back, and it's funny thing about that is after I lost that fight, I was so upset about, and I always watch my films afterwards. I don't like watching me fight, but I watch my films as a coach. Right. As a coach. How, how um, quickly, by the way, do you go back that night to the hotel and look at it? Um, no, when I get home. Mm. Look, I, like, I usually, I go out, and I did not go out. I went, I went back to my hotel room, and I, I drove home the next day. Right. After a loss, for sure. Uh, after that. Well, and usually even after a loss, my guys put in a lot of work. I go out and take go out with them mm. because it's different. If I go out with them, they, they have a good right, time. Yeah. If I, yeah. I don't go out with them, it's like a normal night. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, so I, I feel like I owed him that. But that right. I was crushed by that fight, but not because of that, because I let Tito off the hook. Right. It had nothing to do with Randy. Randy, I respected him. Mm. Funny thing is, when he got the call to fight me, he was at my gym. <laughs> no <laughs> way. Oh, yeah. And I thought, and I overheard it, I thought he was talking about fighting Gan because he was still mm. heavyweight, yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought he was fighting Gan McGee. So I'm like, hey, keep Gan away from him. Don't let him train with Randy. So and I'm like, and, and the funny thing is, I, I told one of his guys one of, my, one of my tricks for getting people, like, because I, I used to go in a half guard when guys are on top of me, yeah. and I'd let them pass. And so they'd slide across, and as soon as they, they, they go to pass, to put a leg real quick, I'm w- ready for it, so I just hip-iced real, mm. real hard. And I was able to, and, and guys all the time do that, and they go, oh, sh- oh sh- damn it. Because yeah. they, don't, they don't take it. So, so in the fight, I actually at one point put my leg down and tried to set him up that way, and he didn't bite. And I'm like, that mother... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I sat there in the fight thinking, the mother... You don't let him come back and train at your gym anymore? Like, get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're like, hey, man, you gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> um, but yeah, but that was it. But I didn't watch the fight. Mm. And the funny thing is, um, so we went and leading up to that fight, I had, I tore my MCL about eight weeks in, eight weeks out. And the mistake, eight weeks before the eight, fight. Eight weeks before the fight. Shit. But I, but no, I was I was healed 100 percent by mm. the fight. But the problem was, is I didn't wrestle leading up to the fight. I'd pummel and do that stuff. But I wouldn't mm. wrestle, mm. and so my timing was off and my my conditioning was off for that which is what I think happened in the first fight mm. so fast forward to when I'm getting ready for the fight we go to watch the film sit down it's the first time and this the, usually I watch I haven't watched it I was I never I couldn't get myself to watch it never watched it finally I watched I go out there and we're all sitting together to watch the fight we got three minutes into the first fight and I stood up I'm, I'm gonna knock him out I'm, mm. out. I'm done I let the room I got this guys no problems yeah. let's go I'm ready and, and I just, look, I, I was watching the thing, I watched it, and I, I'm like, I got it. And, and, and we went out and, I went out and knocked him out. What was it that you saw that you knew? I like was something, some weakness. and gassed by, by, by three minutes in, mm-hmm. and I just, and, and he was, and he was shooting, the way he was shooting is a way that you can't, he, he shouldn't have taken me down. Right. There's no way he should have been able to get, take me down with that shot. And if he tries that shot, it's never going to work. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna. It's gonna be hard for him to finish that. So, the fact my my just reaction time was so off mm-hmm. and my my thing. So when we when we came back, it was just you know and I, it, so you know I went out and I caught him and got him you know and not not nothing against that that fight. I was healthy. I was healthy and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Like I, I mean I was ready to box like a kickboxing. I could have done. I, I think I could have done five rounds. Yeah, like well, five I mean, rounds, you, full speed kickboxing. Yeah. But once we started wrestling, I, mm. I just gashed really well. And I actually learned a really, I, it's something I always tell people, and I, and, I, and, I, and it's a good lesson for people. Like, like I, always, I, cause I always tell people, don't show you're tired. Don't give, don't right. give that to the guy. Don't ever let that guy see mm. you tired. And I, at the end of the third round, I was in my corner just looking like a mess. Mm, yeah. Like I was done. I, and I, I, ta- I heard the story. I, um, uh, he was too, because when he was feeling the same way in his corner, and and Henderson said, "Hey, look at Chuck. He's done. Go push him. You got this." Mm. And that's what got, gave him the energy to do it. And I'm like, I do. I used to do that to people all the time. Yeah, I feed off you being tired. Right. Yeah. If I see you tired, you are you are screwed. Yeah, that's because I predator as soon as I see there, you yeah. tired, I'm like, <sighs> yeah, I forget. Every ounce of tiredness I have, and I'm like, yes, he's tired. Let's go. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, and you, you ended up defending uh, the title four times. One another time against Randy. What a yeah, year later. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, and that, I like that because I, I knocked. A lot of people thought, oh, it was a fluke. He knocked him out. I no, got to come back. And I, yeah. I, I got, I got to 
do it again mm-hmm. and prove it wasn't a fluke. And you beat Sobral, Ortiz, and, and uh, Jeremy again. Yeah. Uh, no, not Jeremy Horn. Yeah, Jeremy Horn's yeah. a friend of ours. He's a, yeah, he's a friend of ours. Yeah. He's in a lot of stuff with Black Good dude. Oh, he's a people. He's I, an I, animal, oh, man, man, he quit. I'm a, I'm a, he's a tough son of a bitch. He's, yes. I'm trying, I'll tell you a story about that one. Matt Hughes told me he, after the first round, he came back to this, he came back to the corner, and, and the doctor was like, hey, you all right? You all right? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Mm. All right? And the doctor leaves and he goes, out. Hey, you all right? And Matt goes, yeah, you all right? I'm seeing three of them. <laughs> That's like, yeah, I told him just hit the one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like the reason he, the reason he called it off in the fourth round, he couldn't. Right. He saw I can't see. Yeah, 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 I can't. That's dangerous. You don't want to do I that. I can't. He's like, he's like, I can't. He couldn't see. He couldn't. He said he could. He said he couldn't see mm. see John. It's yeah. like, I can't see, like so. I mean, people are like, oh, he quit, and he didn't quit. Like, what, was he supposed to stand up? Yeah, and like he can't see like, anyone. Just die. Yeah, just get <laughs> what are you yeah, what, 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 supposed to die? No, nope, like, die in the ring, or it doesn't count. <laughs> Sorry, you're, you're done. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah, it yeah. stupid. Um, it, it, it's crazy. Um, a couple of things I want to ask you. Some rumors. Um, did you ever fight uh, like any one of your matches where you were pounding beers beforehand? No. Never. Okay, you heard I that did, story, right? I've, yeah, I'm, I'm like, but I, someone, you know who told that story? Tito told that story to Dana. Yeah, and, Tito, and Tito, Tito told Dana. Dana was it, was really, this trying was, to start? I was, I, was at, I was at I was at Cheetah's drinking the night before I lost to Randy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was hurt. I, I mean, training for that. Like, that's why I was out of shape. But and, and but and Randy's a great fighter. But mm. I 100 percent was out drinking. Now I used to take my buddies out the night before my fights all the time in Vegas. Mm-hmm. I take him out till twelve, and I leave at twelve. Mm. And I wouldn't drink. I didn't. Right. I didn't drink for training camp. It was started training camp for me was six weeks, then it was eight weeks, then it was like by the end of my. So career, Tito was just trying to talk shit. He was talking shit, and like Dana for Dana to bite on Tito saying that Tito was just being a shithead. Yeah, like he. I mean, yeah, but Dana on, really knew. Dana no, was he probably just using. He, he called me up and, and get mad. Like, no, oh, he, really? no, he called me up like, like, oh, dude, what are you doing? I heard you were doing. That. I'm like, dude, come on, man. You know me better than that. Yeah. That's a, I take that's the thing. Don't get me wrong. I like to have a good time. I like to party. Like yeah, every, for sure. when I, I, we we party through on Monday, like mm-hmm. after fights. But w- before fights, I was all business. Mm-hmm. I had it. I had I had diet. I had diet. I can I mean, I wouldn't break my diet. I had. I, yeah. You know, I was. I was, I was your, training. Your it, fucking it, nickname's it, the Ice I was, Man. I was in You're training camp. There. Yeah. And you, you I would go out, and, 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 and the yeah. funny thing is, I'd go out. I would go out with my friends. Mm-hmm. But I'd go out, and I stay sober, and they they understood. Mm-hmm. I, okay, try, I'd like to have. I, like, I was single. I like to have a good time. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I like to have, go out and have a good time. <laughs> I, but and I wasn't gonna go eight weeks without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without yeah. Yeah. touching your ear. Yeah, yeah there exactly. you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> there it is. The fuck game is strong, dude. Yeah, yeah, I knew it. it. Yeah, we, we, we addressed it. that at the beginning of the show. Yeah, right? we have to. And yeah, you start off with that. <laughs> Since you brought up Tito, I'm going to bring up the, the 30 for 30. Uh, I just watched it um, yeah. with, uh, with you and Tito. And uh, you were unbelievably honest in that. Um, and yeah. very, very candid. And... Uh, I'm I curious of the care. process. That's my, I, I, the guy, look, man, I don't care. Like, I like I, people ask me, like, there's things I don't talk about in, in public and stuff that just because it's, there's no there's no game in it. There's mm. no I don't really want to fight with people. I don't want to argue with you. Like, right. I, I will, but I will. And if if I and if if ask questions, I usually answer them. Like I, or I'll just I could tell, tell people I get asked all the time in interviews. Is there anything we can't ask you? No, you can ask me anything you want. If I don't want to answer, I'll tell you. To go, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a grown man. I know so, yeah. how to say that. Yeah. And the other thing too is like, I don't mind covering a lot of things because if if you really want to s- s- twist what I say and put it out somewhere, because that's been done too, mm-hmm. and say some, I can defend myself. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm not. I don't say anything. I'm not. I'm not an asshole. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I, I don't have. I don't have any. I don't have any issues with me. Yeah. Right. Let's put it that way. But that's why I enjoyed it because uh, for me personally, right. You see these thirty for thirty things. It seems a little scripted. Some of the your your favorite heroes that you look me personally was like Ric Flair, right? I didn't really enjoy that thirty for thirty because I, I felt like there was more there with you. I felt like you were so honest and raw about everything that was going on that as it kept going along, you're like, God damn, this is unbelievable. And I I'd never heard you in a setting like that. What no. did you watch it? And what were your thoughts on it after I, it aired? I, I did watch it. I thought they did. A, I thought they did a great job of covering a very very expansive time and mm. thing over now i they did edit the thing they oh, yeah. they were forced to edit about 15 minutes out of the show 
What, what's missing? Yeah. Well, I, I wait, don't know. Wait, I've wait, never, wait. They've never sent it to me. But you knew what got recorded, right? Let's do... I don't know what... No, I don't know what well, got recorded. No, because they do, I don't they know do what hours of out. interviews. Yeah. But mo- yeah, but yeah. Mo- and, most, and I think most of the stuff that got cut out wasn't mine. I think it had to do with Tito. Oh, yeah. Well, he's... That was my guess, too. He's, been, he's been into a few things over the years. But, but in, in the stuff that got... In that, I mean, you know, he because he's... You know, he, uh, I think he has... It was... The, the, you know, him and Dana going at it back yeah. and forth. It's kind of funny in there. Yeah. But I, yeah. You know, it is what it is. They didn't... They, 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 you know, they, you know that's how he was actually. We were both managed by Dana before they bought right, the yeah. UFC. So. It was yeah. weird back then, yeah, for sure. But, let's let's do uh, the DraftKings thing. Yes, let's do that, and then yes. we'll get in. We'll get into this fight card that's coming up I, because absolutely, this is a big one. Uh, it's it's huge. Um, and Chuck, you're one of those people that I get Steve. asked endless questions to. Steve, um, well, of course, we could talk about this for all. My God, man! The next three years, and we will. Yeah, actually. dude. Uh, yeah, we we will for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, but for these upcoming fights, we're gonna see if you still have it. I'm, I'm going to see if you still have. Do you still watch UFC? Do you still feel confident in your picks? Uh, Sports gambling is huge now, Chuck. Hey, look, here's my thing with my picks. Like I tell you, if you, if you ask me to make a pick and let me go research the guys, yeah. I, I'll make a pick for you. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be confident with it. But I watch fights differently, whether I'm watching it for fun or if I'm coaching. Right, exactly, yeah. So I would have to go back and watch. Yeah, I'll have to watch. If you give me the last three fights of both mm-hmm. guys. Let me watch them. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll tell you who's going to win. Okay. I get it pretty good. I used to be really good. Nine, I get nine out of ten usually. Not usually, and the one, and the one I wouldn't get would be like my heart bet. Everybody's got a heart bet. For sure, and I'd yeah. warn you, like that's yeah. a buddy of mine, but I yeah, think yeah. he's gonna win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. Minus, he's like plus, he's like plus three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Giorgio does it all the time because he does our UFC show, but he wins a lot of them too. I, I'd so. like to see you, you two, do a, a weekly show and get back into yeah, it uh, full that, swing. Yeah. Uh, right now at DraftKings, the tournament is also in full swing. Best time to, to gamble. These in, games uh, so far have been crazy. Ten, I, like 10 upsets oof, already. It's, it's wild. Talk man. to me about Ohio State, bro. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah, I know you're on the ledge right now. Uh, Terman is in full swing, and the action hasn't disappointed. Um, again, the Ohio State thing has, has been miserable. I've, I've gotten all of the things you can go ahead. You should go out and get an Oral Roberts tattoo. Send them to me. Yeah. We're close. I was on the ledge. I was very Epstein last night, where if somebody came in my cell and pushed me, I'd be like, all right, cool. So I wouldn't hang myself. You know, neither did Epstein. So, no. yeah, yeah, something else. He needed a little help. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all need a little help. From we all need time a little time. help. <laughs> Not only need a little help. But, uh, no, if, if, in all sincerity, if, if you're at home and you're uh, gambling uh, on March Madness and UFC and all that stuff, mm-hmm. uh, go to DraftKings. The, the tournament is in full swing. The action has not disappointed, obviously. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, top-rated sportsbook app, uh, is putting new customers in the center of the action. Bet $1 on any tournament game, and if your team wins, you win $100. It's that simple. Turning $1 into $100 is, uh, well, it's 101 odds, That's Dan. a pretty good... Uh it's what it is. To make, yeah. Pick any college basketball team that's still in the hunt. Uh, the shot of winning the title, and you can win $100. Basically, they're just giving you $100. Yes. Go for it. Go to download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code BROS when you sign in to turn $1 into $100. If the college basketball team of your choosing pulls off the win, that's code BROS uh, to turn $1 into $100 for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You must be 21 or older in uh, New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania. New customers only D'Anthony because a lot of people have this is for our newbies out there yeah we got uh, plenty of those restrictions too. apply see draftkings.com slash uh, sportsbook for details you got a gambling problem go to 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana 1-800-9-WITH-IT with that being said Let's here I'm gonna, bottom, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. test your knowledge oh, I'll be right back. oh look at, is he go, are you going to cheat no, it's my, my phone's right there. are you yeah. going to cheat yeah. if you're going to cheat you're going to cheat I, I understand, Chuck. Um, look, is he going to talk to somebody privately? Is he? Ta- I think he's talking to Giorgio off camera about making some picks right now. He's. Uh, he's I think he we, a friend. So here's the thing, Giorgio. Put this on on my shot. Is this on a two on us over here? There you go. I, here's my honest opinion. Okay, mm-hmm. I think we put him on the spot. I think he's looking at some cheat sheets with Giorgio no, out there, looking at some cards and some, and some other bullshit. And that's fine, Chuck. Like, do what you want. Do what you want. However, you're off camp. I'm going to ask fucking Giorgio, obviously, what his picks are. Like, this is going to be a thing. I think they're probably going to be the same. I talked to uh, Chuck before the show about all these, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be the same. How confident do you feel? 
Uh, I feel pretty confident in all these fights, actually. Do you? Well, except for... Uh, I never know in Stipe's fight. The, I the, never know. The first fight, uh, Malarkey versus Worthy, I don't know about that one. Boy. I just don't know either one of those guys well enough to pick. Uh, I'd like to hear what Georgia would Yeah, like we'll, we'll get him in here in a second. But, uh, dude, whenever Stipe's fighting, I have the hardest time with it. Um, He's a, it's a hit or miss with that guy. For it is. Sure, but it's Who did you go and ask for picks for out there? Was it Tito? <laughs> Yeah. Did you call Tito? Yeah, I said, oh, bro, Jackson, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I asked him uh, how to talk. Uh, no, I, so have, you, have you seen his, um, have you seen any of those videos? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's yeah. sending yes. me from, from, yes. from it's city council. It's yeah. bad. Uh, Why does he want to do it? Why does he want to do it? I just I don't, don't get it. But, but, like, did you see when he got it, um, when they, the, my favorite is still the, um, and I, like, when they, they were reading him, they're swearing him in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They read it to him. He sounded like um, Jim Carrey from Wired Liar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it is, it is, it is, it is, like, you're repeating like three words the person said to you. How did he mess that one up? Oh, uh, why yeah. does he want to do it? I don't get I don't any of it. Anybody. The whole thing is confusing. I mean, I. Are you not care. running for like, city council? Is that what you're you're very on brand, like <laughs> nonstop. And it's like, that's the way it should be. You're the yeah, guy yeah. we grew up with. And now yeah. you're the same guy. Like, you haven't changed. Let's get Chuck for city council, man. Exactly. Why not? Yeah. Why not? It is punches problems in the face. Yes. yes. Uh, and look, we're going to get your picks now. Wait, okay, see if you okay, still have it. Okay, damn picks. Okay, it. look, first off, I, I, I haven't watched the fights uh, like that in a long time. Because mm. I'm not coaching. I'm not trying mm. to. I'm not trying to break fights down. But... I'll be happy to do it. But I need to know the odds and what are, what are the prop bets to go with those yeah, fights. Yeah. And I, I can tell you what I would go for because when I when I bet fights, I usually I look at I look for guys that, that are getting good odds. Right. That are value picks. Yes. Not, value picks. Yep. Because I mean for me, like or someone's not someone I know is gonna kick the guy's ass is not that favored. Yeah. And he's not gonna he's not I'm not having to pay three hundred three hundred to get a hundred. Right. You know, you know, I'm looking for guys that you know, the value picks, like the guys that or a guy that has a really good shot, the guy's a two and a half two and a half the guys two to two and a half one underdog that yeah. has a shot to win, has a good shot to win. That's I'm the, the value bet. I, I mean, you gotta go value bets. For you know fighting. where you know where I learned that? One of the guys on the undercard, Sean O'Malley. I, I got fucking house, and he was a huge favorite, and I, yeah. I shouldn't have bet him, and I did, and it is what it is. Uh, first up, we got because uh, the risk is too high. If he lo- if he does, if something like, crazy I mean, does if happen, you, and, you, and you, if you, you, and get, if you yeah. go with the guys school. with the big, like with 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 the big, big try, you gotta go for like a. Go McGregor like, took my legs out, dude. You, you gotta, I bet it all on McGregor. You, if, you, if you gotta get oh. like a heavy favorite, you gotta go with. Um, you really gotta get, like heavy favorites. I usually get, like a par, do parlays, like get, mm. get yeah. a, couple, a couple of other guys underneath it to make it at least worth something. Yeah, so I if, I, if forced, I hit on you know, if I hit all three or four, I make something big. You know, I, I, dude, I forced Giorgio into a parlay last time because we do these, these live UFC watch alongs, and he hit. So I I have nothing but. Gratitude for you, Giorgio. The first fights here, uh, and we we go the big ones, not the prelims. Is uh, Malarkey versus Worthy? Uh, Malark, look, Malarkey is at plus one twenty five. Uh, Worthy is at minus one fifty. Here, um, who you got in this one? Um, I really haven't seen them fight much. I I think I've seen these fight maybe once. Mm-hmm. So, um, Malarkey's twelve and four, and uh, Worthy is seven and zero oh right now. You know, I, what are the odds on that fight? You know, uh, 120, plus 125 and then and minus 150. So you're, I mean, you're looking I, close. I would think, I'm, I'm looking at sometimes, sometimes a guy like with a, a 7 and 0, uh, he's a favorite, light, slight favorite, but they, they're, they're trying to build him. So they, they're probably giving mm-hmm. him somebody who's got a really good shot at beating. Yeah. So I might go with that. Yeah. They just put that's him right. Really, and by the and way, Malarkey's young know, too. He's 26. Malarkey, right? What I'm saying, I don't know why. Uh, that 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 one was the one where I was going. Why is that on the main card? Right. Yeah. Exactly. That says I'm trying. To, Malarkey, that, Malarkey, if he's on the main card, that mean to me that means he's trying, they're trying to build them. Trying to yeah, build them. Yeah. Malarkey so, and Malarkey. Them, yeah. them, they're giving. They're matching him up with someone they think he can beat. Now. Yeah. Not saying the guy that he's fighting is not a good fighter. Right. Because it, it's a UFC. You got to be a good fighter to be in there. Right. Yeah. But but he's well <clears throat> unless you're. So, well, I won't say that. No. Uh, say it. No, say it. Saying, <laughs> anyway, I'm not saying anything. No. He's, he's a nice guy. Who? What's his name? What's his name? Is he white or black? <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> I go. With, so anyway, I'll take I'll take the guy. Malarkey is twenty six years old too. Yeah. If you can get a guy like that on a stretch, then he you can ride him for a while, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. That's that's, like, that's, that's, guy, that's what they're trying to build. I think yeah, they're trying sure. to build him. And I think that's that's probably right. So I, I've got that's I've got Malarkey in this fight, but you know that's not that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good bet to make. 
Yeah, well, you, look, it's plus 125, so you're fine either way. Well, um, it's, it's, it's not it's, well, crazy yeah, odds. Yeah, yeah. Odd, my, my zone fit, that's fine. I, I would go I would go with that. I mean, I, I think I think if, if I had to if I had to pick, I don't I don't know more enough right. watching him while wise, but if I had to pick just on situation and mm. looking at that the way things work. Right, yeah, yeah. I and go, I, and I apologize, sense. Worthy is 16 and 7. Uh, I apologize, yeah, yeah. 16 and 7 or no. Um, He's fought a life, 34 years old. Yes. This to me is a Cowboy Cerrone versus McGregor thing. They're trying to fucking pump this dude up, giving him somebody that's a good fighter, yep. well-known, but yep. also somebody he can beat. I've got malarkey in this one. Yeah. Um, Giorgio, who do you got? Yeah. Malarkey, so he's, he's got malarkey. malarkey. Okay. Now, the next guy is Sean O'Malley. Sean you, O'Malley. Now, this is the guy I lost all my shit on. You've seen him fight, on. but that wasn't... 12 and 1. To me, that, that one is an asterisk, right? Because he got hurt there, obviously. Oh, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. hurt from the very first... 16 and 7? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was... Uh, it was correct. It, it was... It was you, you, malarkey is... is uh, yeah, yeah. I, and and I, knew, I knew what you meant on that one. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we're all across the board on that but one. Sean O'Malley, he's got one Sean loss. Sean O'Malley is where I lost a, a lot of money. I'm worried he's coming Sean back O'Malley. too fast. Like you were talking about the first time you fought Randy at that MCL tear. And not being able to train as hard as you normally train for guys that... It, it can, it can, it doesn't just affect. It's, it doesn't matter if you're 100 percent healthy at the fight. I mean, they still have I, Sean O'Malley I, at minus 300. I, I like, against Sean, I like Sean O'Malley in this fight, but I don't know if I would. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not minus, minus 300. Minus I, I Why would you I do that? Like, I don't like that. I don't like those. Odds. No, that's one to three odds. Why the fuck would you take that? You yeah, can't I, make I mean, any money. I think, I, and honestly, with, with, at plus 240, you might want to. I mean, you might take the. You might take a stab. Just in case he's still hurt or winded or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. Value pick. That's a value pick. I'll take. I'll take Almeida. I'm gonna take him. I'm gonna take him. Yeah. Whoa, who do you got, Georgia? Are you sure? Yeah, I, I think Sean's gonna I think O'Malley will win, but I I'm think gonna Sean's bet. gonna uh, Sean, Sean O'Malley's gonna win, so I'd stay yeah. and I'd stay away with the odds, I'd stay away from it, but if 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 you if you want to do so, if you feel like if you're feeling like would you say it is two fifty? You're still like rolling the dice. It's plus, minus three hundred for it's minus O'Malley. 300. Yeah, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna throw a little cash in Almeida. No, uh, what is I don't it? believe in Sean O'Malley after that last fight. No, what's I, I believe in him still. Well, now That's, you're bad. Now you're gonna, you're gonna double down on yes, getting, dude. Getting beat up. Fuck yeah. him. Like he needs to know that. <laughs> yes, dude. Double down on getting beat up. Yes, <laughs> you get beat up. No, both no, both no, 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 no. I think O'Malley will probably. What's what is you spent too much time in your hair, not enough time on on your leg work, and and it's all over. What's Back and they get, they, they're smart enough to bring plus two forty. Uh, and now I'm thinking like like a promoter trying to make a good good, good matchup <laughs> that you want to be. You don't want to lose Sean O'Malley. He's a no. fight, he's an exciting no. fighter. No. You're going to bring in somebody that yeah. to get him to get him warm back up. Make but, sure he but make sure he's still. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just in case he does, he is still hurt. I'm going to put a hundred bucks in Almeida. At, at, <laughs> I mean, it's plus two forty. Why not value pick, baby? Yeah, it's a good bet because yeah, I, you know, I lose two hundred, but I might win two forty if I bet. On Sean O'Malley, and if he loses, I'm going to lose way more money. Yeah, dude. Because I have to spend more money to make that money. So yes. Fuck that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's probably going to win, though. O'Malley will probably win. Next dude. up is, uh, dude, Tyrone Woodley. This card is stacked, by the way. Yeah, he's 38 years old, though. Oh, Giorgio's having a hard time with this right now. He is a UFC messiah. No one's doubting your ability, Giorgio. Um, and if we weren't in a tiny, tiny place. He's, you think, so you think Tyrone's going to lose uh, to... Uh, well, hey, look, his last couple of fights, the problem with Tyrone is he, he's not pulling, he won't pull the trigger. Yeah. He's, yeah. Like, he's gotten gun shy. Like, he's not pulling the trigger. If, if he found a way to, 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 lay, to, to go out there and fight again... Yeah, just come out if he found a way, If he found a way to come out and start fighting again, yeah. like, <laughs> like exploding the way he, he, he has the ability, he has the explosiveness, he has um, uh, the technique there, but... If he can't get, get get out of his own head, and because and, he's he just seems like he's uh, he's just frozen. It looks to me like, like he's, he's just he's loading a, up he's a, uh, on that back uh, arm, and he's just waiting for that perfect shot. The perfect shot never see, comes. Yeah, and he just it seems like he just doesn't. It just seems like he just doesn't pull the trigger, mm-hmm. and he's he's gotten gun shy. So and he's thirty eight years he, old too, right? Yeah, he's got well, and that maybe you know, as a guy maybe he relied a lot on speed and. That sometimes becomes, and that's one of the first things to go. Right? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, yeah. the speed, speed goes before power. So. So I'm with you. I, I think Woodley loses. What about you, Georgia? Yeah. 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 What's, what's the, uh, what's the uh, spread on this? So right with Woodley, it's plus 220. So, I mean, he's a heavy underdog yeah. in this one. Well, that's correct. Yes. And so I I'm think not, this is probably one of his last fights. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not betting yeah. this yeah. at all. Uh, Luke, Luke, Gay. Luke, Luke, Luke yeah, Gay, yeah, yeah. Um, there's no, there's no way to make money on this fight, to be honest. Well, gambling wise, it, it's minus two seventy, yeah. And and I wouldn't bet on Woodley. That's too risky. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got uh, Volkanovski. 
and Ortega. Yeah, versus Ortega. Yeah, yeah this is a really good one. fight. This might be the best fight of the night. Technical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It should be a good fight. Yeah. Um, I, Stipe I mean, and Ghana is going to be a good fight one way or the other, but this this uh, is probably the best technical matchup in the fucking in yeah, the card. Yeah, so. I mean, I... Uh, the warning, warning. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Ortega. Mm-hmm. I'm fr- in I'm, real I, life, I like the guy in real life. Yeah, yeah. and so, um, I want him to win. That's These guys I'm, are that's pretty. What I'm going for. I mean, and they're pretty, they match up pretty good. And they I'm do, just, yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping. I, I'm hoping he, he comes out there. Nobody has close, any you know? huge advantage in age or, or reach or, or, yeah, or I, height I, or any of that stuff. They both have similar records, although Volkanovski's got more fights. This is a good. This is the best fight. I don't even. It's gonna be. A, that's gonna be a what, great fight. I, I what's like the odds it. on this? Ortega's fifteen and one. Volkanovski's twenty two and one. Uh, Volkanovski is minus one eighty, so he's the favorites. Uh, Ortega's plus one fifty five. If I was gonna bet, that's it, probably I, right. I, I, I take, would take. I'd take Ortega. I'd take Ortega on that bet because plus one eighty. Well, you gotta. You gotta spend one point eight times more dollars to make the same amount. I understand, but I'm going with who wins in uh, in this life on this one. I'm going with Volkanovski. Uh, Giorgio, who do you got? He's got Volkanovski as well. Yes. So I, we got a 2-2 matchup here on this set. So this, this is more the reason why you should watch it. Yeah. Uh, we are split. <laughs> now we got the main event, Stipe versus uh, Francis Ngannou. Ngannou. Yeah, man. He is, Ngannou is straight out of the sand mines. I mean, what the fuck, man? I didn't know that was a thing, first of all. A sand, sand mine? mine? Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. This guy is an animal. Yes. He is a goddamn monster. I'm sure his fists are the size of a fucking lunchbox. But he's still got to make contact at some point. Yeah. The problem is Stipe... As talented as he is, I can't tell which Stipe shows up to which fight. I agree. You know what I mean? I now, agree. He's sponsored by Kill Cliff, actually, so maybe that'll help him well, out. Well, congrats bit. on all that, and that's great, and so are we. Yeah. But uh, here's what I'll say on that. Like, when you're a first responder, <laughs> firefighter, mm-hmm. um, and that's your job, because he's still working there, to my knowledge, yeah. right? Uh, do you get to train as much as somebody like this who's doing this full time? Like, I don't know who's going to show up for this. Oh boy, the odds on this are minus one thirty for for Francis. Francis is the favorite here, uh, and and only plus one ten for Stipe. So Vegas has it as a close fight. Uh, yeah, pretty much a pretty much a pick em. Yeah, yeah, a pick yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Francis on this one. I'm not gonna look. To, either way, there'll be a good fight. Either oh. Stipe will Stipe will have to dominate him pretty good to win this fight. And I don't know if that'll happen, but Ngannou is gonna knock him out probably. Right? You got to think that's gonna happen. Oh, Georgia's shaking his head. Who do you got? You guys see paying this? You had 25 minutes. What do you think has changed? You've already seen this for 25 minutes. Is will he land? Because it looks like he's going to land a right hand. Okay. Yeah. And I don't think he's going to do it. Yeah. We'll see. So yeah. you got, you're, you're, I, I, got, got okay. you're, you're all in on C pay. I got C pay too. You're all in on C pay too. Oh, yeah. No shit. Uh, I the, like I, Flash yeah. though. I like the. I, so maybe it's the. That's your heart bet. Yes, though. it is. That's my heart bet because this, this I love guys like you and him. Where it's like I want to see a let's knockout. Fucking no. knock some people out, dude. Let's crush some skulls in there. Yeah. Well, no. I. I mean. Yeah, but he's he's got to land. He's got to land that punch. Yeah. He's got to come out. But he has to come out and start throwing. He's got to throw some combinations. He's got to. Nagano gets sometimes gets stuck in just trying to land that one big punch. He's and, it's the same as Tyler. Uh, if, yeah. if you're good, if you're good technical fighter it's hard to land that one big punch when I, that's all you're doing mm-hmm. it's like someone coming out saying I'm gonna head kick you okay, Stipe well, definitely you is you keep trying to head kick me and I, yeah. okay, there, you have no shot at head kicking yeah. me right if you, you make it look like something if you start beating up someone's legs you make it look like a, a leg kick mm-hmm. and then kick a guy in the head mm-hmm. ah, that works right but, yeah. but you gotta set it up if you're not setting it up against a, a and, and Stipe is a, a technical enough boxer he's very it's good it's hard yeah. it's gonna be hard to land that 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 Big right hand. If that's all you're doing, right? Well, if he's, if well, you got to think he got to learn that's the start, last start. fight, though, right? Yeah, and, and, you know, they, he might have, and that would that and that'd be a, a great transition. Something. Great, all something he, all he has to do is add one other element to shake that up. Then he can, yeah. you know, land that. If he can land that right hand, it's over, right? Stipe is now 38 years old, which is a little long yeah. in the tooth for a fighter. I don't know, man. Like. Steve is a very good technical fighter. No quite, yeah. To see a heavyweight that's a great technical fighter like that is not the most common thing. But what, what Giorgio was saying, I think in the last UFC fight we watched, he got him to the ground, uh, the big pole. You know, you know, I love the poles. I love, yeah, but I, Stipe I love knows the Polish. That, and uh, it's just, and Gano knows that just as well as Stipe does. So he's, I, I would assume his camp is like, well, we can't do that again. That's I hope so. I'm, think, going, right? I'm going with Francis in this. You guys have Stipe all, all the way around? Uh, I, I have. Yeah, I think Stipe's going to win, but I, I would like, to, I would prefer, not that I don't like Stipe. I love the guy. He's a fucking great fighter. I enjoy watching him fight, actually. He's one of the guys that's technical that's also not boring. Mm-hmm. So I like that. 
but to see and go, I would, remember back in the late nineties when I was like, I would love to see Randy Johnson throw a, the, his fastest fastball and see Mark McGuire hit it as hard as he could and see where it lands. Yeah. I want to see Francis and really make contact with somebody, some real heavyweights face and to see what happens. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like it yeah. split half his head in half. That's what I want to see every single fight, dude. Same. Every single fight. So, I mean, my heart bet would say Ngana, but there's no way he's going to win this fight. There's, unless he's made some radical fucking movement towards a technical skill like that, it's probably not going to happen, right? Stipe's a very polished guy. Yeah, Stipe's very polished. And, I, I, you know, it, I, I don't know. Like, I'm sure Nagano's been working. He's going to get work on it. It's just adding some combinations. If he comes he's got to set up more set up. and he can trick Stipe, then the heavyweight division's in fucking trouble. <laughs> if that yeah. that monster can fucking start learning additional skills, everybody, even at 34, everybody's in serious trouble because he is a, he's one of the most athletic human beings I've ever seen. Yeah. In the, in the yeah he's a, I mean, he's he's a big boy. He's yeah, he is a massive human being. reminds me a lot of myself. No. Um, yeah, you were, at, you were trying to get involved in his sex life earlier. What are you talking about? Well, I, we, it, the, the audience needs to know that Chuck Chuck's uh Look at it. You can tell. He's had so the same strong. haircut since 92. You don't... You don't People that don't fuck have to change their haircut from time to time. I understand, right? but it's, that's important for the audience. <laughs> this guy's had it for 30 goddamn years. <laughs> but it's important for the audience to know that his fuck game is still strong, so don't ask me anymore. Chuck Liddell's uh, fuck game is strong. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about uh, the crossover fights that are happening now. Um, who do you have? Ben Askren, MMA fighter, versus Jake Paul, the YouTuber. Like... Well, I think uh, Jake Paul may, made the best decision he can make if he's going to fight a uh, UFC fighter. Mm. It's a guy that Ben Askren who's not not a, not a striker, but I think he overestimated or underestimated um, Askren's chin. Mm. I mean, Askren went with, with Robbie Lawler nailed him quite a few times. It didn't hurt him too bad. And Robbie, Robbie Lawler hits really hard. Yeah, Get, okay. getting getting flying knee in the head is not the same thing. Yeah. And you got to understand, like yeah. he's he's. A wrestler like like him, Ben Askren, mm -hmm. when they shoot, he shoots really hard. Like there's a lot of force behind that shot. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the first time I got hit, hit by double leg by, by an Olympic Olympic guy, mm. a wrestler, a really high end wrestler, I hit me almost like it struck you in the stomach, mm. right? Yeah. So you you go in that hard after guy running across the ring doing that. And he's running across the ring and throwing a flying knee. Yeah. There's a lot of force that collided. Yeah. That's like one of those bugs bite. Yeah. Yeah. You know, explosions. Yeah. So, I mean, so don't think he's going to be easy to knock out. That's not going to, yeah. that's not going to, and he will be in shape. He will be, he, I mean, I don't think he'll have problems doing the eight rounds. Mm. So I, and he seems like he, he plans on winning. But like, if I, if, if, I was Jake. I mean, I had to pick somebody that probably be the guy I pick. Maybe because right. he's probably the no he's not, shit. He's not known for being a striker. But see, the thing well, you is, just don't want to get knocked out, and, right? And, yeah. well, people. Here's the thing, though. People don't realize with wrestlers. Mm. Wrestlers, they they don't have they, they, they usually don't have a great straight right. They usually mm. don't have a great jab. But when they start throwing wide, like body like mm. hooks, like if you catch them alone, they got power because they have that core body strength. And mm. guys, when I teach guys, you know, they got, they got power if you get them winging those hooks. Mm. Yeah. So he gets caught by one of those. He might he might not like it very much. But I would know, love it. It, make, it, it, it makes it makes it. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> what, does it, what, what does it do to the MMA community if Nothing. if a YouTuber knocks out Ben Askren? Not, nothing. He just knocked out a wrestler. Yeah. Mm. What's it do? Like, yeah. what's that say? Oh, okay. right. so you can beat, who are you going to beat? Pick pick a striker. He'll come and destroy you. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you, if it was you in the ring with him, would you beat Jake Paul in a boxing match? Straight up boxing. Uh, straight up boxing. I will tear his head off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd pay to see that. I'd pay that pay-per-view any day of the week. Any so day. at your age, uh, all the things, like, you would, yeah, you would tear, his, you would tear his head off. Like, uh, he's... I, <laughs> stick to fighting guys that aren't boxers that aren't are strikers like yeah. I, yeah. yeah he'll be fine <laughs> other, other celebrities uh, basketball it's players whatever it is yeah, 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 yeah. whatever you're playing yeah, yeah, stick to those guys the yeah. guys are <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing because uh, the the odd thing about it is uh, we're forced to cover it because it's become such a story and the pay per view yeah. numbers are massive. Well, on but, it. But, hey, and would you do more it? power to them? Yeah, good like, for them. Hey, good for them. Like I'm mad at anybody. Like yeah. hey, if, if if someone wants to, I'm not I'm not a big fan of watching a lot of things. Yeah. But if, if other people want to watch it and they want to get paid and they get a, guys are getting paid mm -hmm. and, and hey Ben Ashton's getting a big paycheck for it, great. Yeah, like hey, if he wants to go fight, fine. And I I think it, it yeah, I think. 
Jake's going to be a little surprised when he gets out there. He's expecting less of a fight. Yeah. I think he thinks he can go out there and knock him out because he got knocked out. Getting knocked out by that is does not qualify as you have a weak mm, chin. And yeah. standing in front of Robbie Lawler lets me know you don't have a weak chin. That dude. Oh, that yeah, Robbie, he took, he took Robbie hits. He, he took some. He took some abuse from Robbie yeah. without and didn't go down. That was one I mean, of the better. Almost, better. almost, but I did. Well, that so was, so let's let's say this right. Jake Paul wins. Chuck gets the call to fight him in another fight. What do you do? Oh, no problem. Yeah. I, I, so, so you, you kind of do my, it. I, yeah. I, I, why not? <laughs> <laughs> he's not a, a, I mean, he's an amateur boxer. Yeah. At right. Best. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, for uh, sure. How, how, like, so, so for someone like you, how long would you need to train for somebody like that? Well, I would, if I've been a fight, I'll train. I, mm. I would, I would train as long as they gave me, but I, I mean, I'll, I'll fight him right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in bad shape. I'll, well, fight, I'll, go, I'll go there and fight him right now if he wants to. <laughs> Let's just go over to Jake Paul's house right quick because he lives here in L.A. No, he's just moved it's to like, Miami because he, he has oh, been training. And, like, look, he, he said numerous times, like, this is my profession. This is what I want to do because he's a young kid. He's, like, 23 years old, I think. Yeah, um, and, and, yeah, you can get good. I mean, take mm-hmm. time. And I mean, if he, I was an athlete, I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess. You, heard it here, you heard it here first. Uh, if, if he beats Ben... Chuck is ready to fight him next, and he will get in with virtually zero training and then tear his head off. and tear off the head of yeah. Jake Paul, which would be a blast to see. Because let's face it, this is what it. all of this has become. Right? It has become the biggest uh, social media stars, the biggest celebrities of all time. And like, look, dude, you're everyone's favorite, including shit, man. We watched the UFC card what two weeks ago, Giorgio, um, and they were still doing promos of you. For UFC, you were still cut into the footage during the commercial breaks, for Christ's sake, some of that to promote sh- the UFC. Some of that shit you did back then was slick. Nobody had ever seen a guy push out or, like, sprawl out and then left hook a guy right quick and then start clobbering him. No. Usually guys throw knees or they try to push off or they try to lock in or take down. I think you might be, have been the first to do shit like that. It was really exciting. I would pay all the money to see you watch Jake Paul. Like, that would be fucking awesome. Just well, well let him know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid <laughs> of getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Goodell is not afraid of getting paid. Uh, this is the point in the show where you get to the Drinking Bro of the Week, which is someone who has inspired you or helps you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the Drinking Bro of the Week to? Oh, inspired me. Um, you know, um, you know, I, I was actually uh, talking to um, Rob Deerdick the other day, and, and he, he inspires me. I got his transition from... From what he was doing before to what he's doing right. now, with uh, becoming an uh, entertainer, like a real well, entertainer, entertainer, and then go well, from being an athlete to an entertainer now, now to VC now stuff, VC and, stuff, yeah. and that and stuff really he's doing. That, yeah. And he's he's, I mean, his his attitude and his way his way of thinking and moving and like yeah. like because it, it's a weird transition when you retire from fighting. Like I, for me, like it was, and I know a lot of athletes, a lot of in different sports, uh, right. snowboarding, uh, mm-hmm. uh, football, baseball. Mm-hmm. It's a really weird transition when you're done, you know. Right. To, to, you're all of a sudden you you used to have like this big, you know, guiding force for me. Mm-hmm. It was always I, I want to be world champion. Right. And then then it was I want I want to show everyone I'm the best in the world. Like, I, I always mm-hmm. had that there, mm-hmm. controlling stuff and making sure I'm not doing s- something too stupid mm-hmm. or to, you know something some, something to control me, and and kind of directing me. And then all of a sudden you don't have that anymore. And it's the first time you're kind of like, okay, now what, now what do I do? Yeah, I had all exactly, the, yeah. And for me, I had, <clears throat> luckily for me, I did, did a lot of good things and I have a lot of opportunities. Yeah. It's just, which one do I do? Like, right. what do I want to go there a little bit, go there? I don't know. What do I do? So, uh, you know, a lot of guys struggle with that, especially the guys that were in, like athletes that, that didn't do it, didn't have enough afterwards. So mm-hmm. right, there. yeah, yeah. There's they're a really, lot now, of them. A lot now, of them. Now, they, now they're done and they, they had this fame, they had this stuff, but now they... Now yeah, they're working they're a nine now, to five. Now, now yeah, they got to live. Now, they got to yeah. live. Now what they got to do, and and they, and they struggle with that mentally. So, you know, I I, I talked to him recently and, and uh, about it all that stuff, and uh, and he, it was really inspiring to hear hear his his version of it, the way and the way he he thought of it, and mm. and and uh, something I believe all the time is find something else that you love doing. Cause yeah. I, yeah. I, I, the biggest blessing I had is I love fighting. Mm-hmm. I love my job, like that. That I mean, maybe, I, but. So moving on, it's you got to love what you do, like right. enjoy what you do. Like people ask me, oh, "Are you going to keep doing movies?" I love doing movies. Mm-hmm. I have fun doing it. I'm actually learning how to act, learning how to do fight scenes because yeah. it's different. Like making choreographing, a, stuff, choreographing yeah, something, so but yeah. showing a 
making a fight look good on TV is not the right. same as fighting. Right. <laughs> you know, like, that punch is guy, eight inches like, away. Yeah. Yeah. And if it, but that one looks better than the one when it does, I yeah, do it, it does. where I'm tapping you because I can't hit you as hard as I normally hit you. If I tap right. you yeah. and you're like, you're, you know, and if, I'm, if I hit you as hard as I can, we, we're not going to have too many takes. <laughs> you know, we have to be one take wonders. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> So yeah, it's it, but it, as long as people ask, how long are you gonna do that? As long as, long as it keeps being fun, yeah, I like doing sure. it. I, you know, and well, Rob's doing it right though. I mean, he took he took some early commercial success and turned it into entertainment with ridiculousness at a couple other shows. Right? And now he's the and he's the only moving, show on now he's moving out of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. now, now he's doing investing. Right, that's the that's the process. Right, new investing company. He's been huge for him, and he's a good dude too. So he's like a great person. I I love that guy. Yeah, I would I'd like to see a list of all the charities he donates to because we've worked with. Uh, one of his charities in the past, he gives a fuck ton of money away. He yeah. gives it away, but that's good. That's a good. That's a good call. I like that one. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, man. Every time I turn on MTV, mm. he's on twenty four hours a day. He, yeah, it's, it's pretty he much. Owned, his oh, we about stock. Street Guy. He, 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 when he sold that show, like how many episodes? He was like, he was when he when they sold a bunch of episodes. He was like, actually, tell me, he's like, I was actually trying to get out because I didn't want to turn into that. Old guy on MTV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he still looks Hell, young and no, it's yeah, cool. It's fine, like, but no, yeah. he's still cool. He's cool anyway. He's like, but he's like, but he's like, but then they bought this many episodes. Like, but then he was like, well, I go and shoot them this day, this day, and this day. Yep. Yeah. You know, and like, and then I take a week off, and then I go back mm. and do them Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I go again and do all these episodes. He's like, it's entertaining and it's, and it's and free money, and basically. Yeah, and he's he's. I mean, it's great. Those things are hysterical. Hate that. He has all those, all those. I've been on that show a couple of times. I fucking laugh my ass off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had another show. See, see, see on a, it's a, who, what kind of, who thought of that? That was great. Like, mm-hmm. look it up something on the internet and just make fun of it. Right? That's it. That's all it is. <laughs> uh, a friend of ours, uh, Brendan Schaub, um, is, is on there uh, yeah. quite a few times mm-hmm. as well. And he goes, dude, it's a blast. They shoot a bunch in a row. And, yeah. uh, and they're on every single day of the week. On the flight here, um, we were on, I think it was JetBlue. There was, we saw nine people watching ridiculousness in front yeah. of us in a row. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, it was 80 channels to choose from, but they, they always gravitate towards that yeah. for some reason. Yeah, it's, um, it's good, man. So that's great. Well, look, me personally, I'd like to, to hear you doing more podcasts and everything. So, yeah. All right. Well, uh, well, yeah. Foreboding. Foreboding. A little foreshadowing. Coming soon. Here. Coming to you soon. <laughs> Coming soon. Uh, Chuck Odell, it's, it's a pleasure, man. Yeah, um, man. Great. You're like one of my favorites. Again, favorite since... Uh, as, a, as a fucking young bouncer at Ohio State, dude. Mm-hmm. Kevin Randleman rolling around, tearing people's faces All the way off. to the 65-year-old wow. senior citizen he is. No, now. 33 years old. <laughs> young man, <laughs> you're, very, very You're 33 in a fucking time machine, bitch. I can still punch, though, man. You know, I... I yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chuck, do I need to sleep, you do? Do I need to fucking sleep? <laughs> That's what we need. You know, you never know, though, with people like... I, I, you know, I, I won't mention names, but like you get guys I hold mitts for their athletes, mm. football players, some of them, some of them, like I was one, one, one guy, I know I'm holding mitts for him. Mm. Sure. And he, football, NFL football player. And he's saying, I'm like, come on, man, hit it hard. And he's just going, look, man, quit dogging it, hit it harder. And like, and I said, get hit harder. I'm like, oh shit, he's, this guy's he, never he, been in a fight before. Yeah, he's trying to hit this as hard as he can. Oh shit. Yeah. Well, so, sorry. sorry. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, a guy, I was working with Kyle Long. Mm. Oh, yeah. I got a hold of mitts for him. Jesus Christ. What the fuck he's, was he's that? A, he's a big, really? he's a big yeah, human being. Yeah, he can too. crack, man. Yeah. yeah. Got, Is that how his son? Or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's how his son. Right? He, yeah. he recently retired, he's but I mean, dude. Yeah, dude. He, he was, man, when, like, he's one of those guys that go, oh, shit. Yeah, like, okay, okay, all right, I'm good. Okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, for me personally, like, I was always wise of like, all right, man, if you look at people, you think you might lose, you probably might. So like, yeah. like, let's not fucking do it. And I'm not one of those heroes either. It was, was going to be like, oh man, there's Chuck Liddell. Fuck him. He's got to be no. If you late see forties or whatever yeah. it if is, you see a snake. You know in, if you I, see a snake and it's got a rattle around it, yes, just walk dude, the fuck yeah. away, my man. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. man I, the funny thing is, I, I used to have buddies just ask me like, hey, how do you walk in a bar and like like size up and peek guys and say, I'm like, why the fuck would I do that? No, like, I don't want to fight anybody. I'm like, not getting paid for. By it. the way, and by the way, if they don't, if 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 they commit a fighting offense, I don't care. I'm going to fight them anyway. Yeah. yeah. Whether they kick my ass or not. So who yeah. the fuck cares? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Funny one on that one. I, I, uh, we walk into babies a long time ago, mm-hmm. back when, when and the, the guys are okay, walking in. I'm, I, I want you to know, um, Tito's in there. We're not going to have a problem, right? I look at him. I'm like, you got a couple million dollars. 
No way. So no. wait, wait. So, like, he, so Tito was in there. He had, the, he had a table in, inside. Is that the guy bar. serious? Because if you guys had gotten no, a fight said, in his no, bar, it'd be the most here. famous bar of all time. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Um, do, you, uh, do you have a couple million dollars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. He said, no. Well, then. Um, no. Oh, we're not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm going to go drink in there. I, yeah, like, yeah, I came yeah. here to drink and do some other things. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, of course. Babies. Of course. I, yeah. Of course. Uh, right. Chuck, thank you for being here. Uh, it was a blast. Can't, can't wait to see this card this weekend. Uh, for Chuck Liddell, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I am Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.